Hi YouTube, this is the Peaceful Prepper. Today I want to talk about how to manage your refrigerated and frozen food during a power outage. Thanks to Brian Blues for raising this issue in the comments of my Lights Out box video. It's an important thing to plan for and that video didn't address it at all. I encourage you to read the comments under the videos because a lot of good information gets shared that I didn't think about at all for the video. There's good news and bad news about urban power outages. The good news is we tend to have shorter power outages since the power companies usually work on restoring our power first. The bad news is our options for backup refrigeration tend to be much more limited. There are a wide range of options, but a lot of them won't be practical for most apartment dwellers. And don't forget about other critical things that are powered by electricity. Obviously, you need a backup for any medical devices that rely on electricity. But if you live in a building with an elevator, think about how that could impact you in an emergency. You might live on the 20th floor and not have the physical ability to walk down the stairs. There could be a medical emergency, or if you decide to bug out or just need to evacuate the building, the floor you live on could have a big impact on what you can take and how long it'll take you to leave the building. I don't live in an elevator building, but I, and I'm just on the third floor, but even that has an impact on my bug out planning. In this video, I'm just going to be focusing on refrigerated and frozen food. And I'm not going to be talking about the details of food safety, but I've put some links below that provide a lot of information. I learned one of my first lessons in emergency preparedness as a child from my father. When the power goes out, eat the ice cream before it melts. I think probably everyone knows that tip, and you might also choose to eat some of some other favorite food or something that's particularly temperature sensitive, but that doesn't really solve the main problem. For most of us in an apartment, coolers are going to be the key element in keeping our refrigerated food safe to eat. There's a range of quality, sizes, costs, styles, something for everyone in coolers. I actually had no idea to, to what extent that was true until I was putting together this video. The orange grizzly cooler that's pictured there is 400 quarts big and costs about $800. The cooler that I used in my water storage video is about 18 quarts and cost $22. So there's a pretty wide range. If space is a really big issue for you, you can get a soft-sided cooler that folds up and can be stored easily. But know that they're not generally as effective as the hard-sided cooler with thicker walls. Coolers are a great urban prep. You can store water, water bottles or other emergency supplies in them to save space and avoid flooding your downstairs neighbor or your floor. They help to keep your food cold and they can be used as a thermal cooker. You bring your food to a boil, wrap the pot in towels, put it in the cooler, and it'll continue to cook without additional food. Depending on how much food you have, what the outside temperature is like, and how long the power outage lasts, you may or may not be able to keep your food safe in a cooler, but these tips can help. Stock up on ice if you anticipate a power outage. Make ice, buy ice, freeze bottles of water. Frozen water bottles can be used in a cooler, and when they melt, you have drinking water. If, there's cold, if it's cold weather, you can pack everything up in a cooler and leave it outside. A small balcony or a fire escape makes this easy. You probably don't want to leave it outside your building in a city, obviously. If you have access to a roof on top of the building, that may be a good place to leave it. You'd, you'd know one way or the other. If the food is from the refrigerator, insulate it and check it occasionally. You don't want it to freeze. Um, two coolers let you keep refrigerated and frozen food separate. If you have a heated apartment and no access to the outside or the weather's warm, find the coolest place you can. You can wrap, it, wrap the cooler in blankets or other insulation to protect it further from the heat. Basements are often the coldest place in a building, but you may or may not have access to one. If there's the possibility of flooding, don't put your cooler down there. Ironically, losing your heat is good news for maintaining the food you put in the cooler. You know, just 
make a small area that you can spend time in as warm as possible and put the cooler in the coldest part of the house. Generators are probably the go-to solution for many people. They come in lots of sizes, prices, can use a range of fuels. You can buy a whole house generator and not, to do a th not need to do a thing about your refrigerator. A smaller generator can be set up to provide power to designated plugs, maybe your fridge, freezer, and a couple of lights. But generators have to be run outside, and they aren't practical for most apartment dwellers. Batteries and standby power devices are safe to use inside, but generally won't be adequate to power any kind of refrigeration, especially for a significant amount of time. There are larger ones that are used by companies and retail establishments. They're going to be expensive. Some car batteries also have an AC and or 12 volt plug and can be charged by solar or AC power. But again, they don't tend to have enough power for a refrigerator and wouldn't last for days, certainly. There are always larger ones available for more money. I haven't really looked into this in detail, but I'd love to hear um, if anyone has. There are also some creative options that are kind of fun to think about. The bike in the middle um, of this picture is attached to a battery. You charge the battery by riding the bike, and again, probably not for a refrigerator, but portable and alternative power options have improved a lot. There are some great DIY ideas and videos on YouTube about generating your own power, and that certainly could be useful in an emergency or as a long-term way to reduce your power consumption overall. If you're able to generate some power, you want it to be as efficient and last as long as possible. Full-size refrigerators need a lot of power. If you had a mini fridge or a 12-volt cooler, you could keep some key foods cool using much less power. In addition to practical considerations, there are always financial ones. How much you want to spend is going to depend on how much you have invested in refrigerated and frozen food, how long you anticipate needing alternative refrigeration, and how much money you have to spend. Are you planning for a storm for a few weeks or a bug-in situation for months or maybe a year? If you don't have anything else, get a refrigerator thermometer. Knowing how high the temperature got in your fridge or cooler helps you determine whether foods are safe to eat. They can be as cheap as a few dollars or you can get a fancy digital one. I don't know how high they run. I'm sure you can spend a lot of money on it if you want to. And a 12-volt cooler could be really useful if you're bugging out in a car. I don't know whether they have the power to keep food frozen for very long, but they should do a good job of keeping refrigerated foods at a temperature that's safe to eat. If it's feasible, you might want to consider sharing a freezer and generator with neighbors or family, friends, some kind of group. My parents um, retired to a small town where a lot of my mother's family lived, and they lived way up a hill. There were lots of power outages. All it took is a fallen branch, and it certainly wasn't a high-priority area for the power company. They had a big chest freezer with a dedicated generator, and when the power went out or when there was a storm being anticipated, my mother's cousins packed up their fridge, packed up their freezer, and brought it to my parents' house. And it really worked well for all of them. And of course, on the expensive or hard work side of the chart, root cellars, whole house generators, living off grid are very effective options, but not so easy when you live in an apartment. So having done our best to keep food cold, how do we know if the food is safe to eat? There's a lot of information online, and I'm putting a link to foodsafety.com below. They have, they have a lot of information, but per, in particular they have a useful chart for both refrigerated and freezer items, the temperature, where they're still safe, whether they can be refrozen, etc. You never want to get food poisoning, but especially during an emergency it's important to be really careful. This is the Peaceful Prepper. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Be safe, be happy.